Hello, in this video, I will be talking about hair thinning on endocrine therapy. Before I go on, I want to invite you to subscribe to our channel. We're always putting out new content and often, like with this topic, it's based on a question that we see a lot in the comments. Hair thinning from endocrine therapy it can be really heartbreaking. If you've had chemotherapy, lost your hair, and it's growing back, then you start on an aromatase inhibitor and your hair starts to thin. It can be so discouraging. And recall that endocrine therapy is something we recommend for five years in the average person and as many as 10 in higher risk people. So to be on a medication that leads to hair thinning can be really distressing for people. In my experience, hair loss from chemotherapy is devastating and people seem to bounce back even when there's a change in texture or color of their hair. Hair thinning from aromatase inhibitors and tamoxifen is really hard for people. It's not complete hair loss except very, very rarely. I don't think many oncologists have seen this, but it's upsetting. Now, it's more common with the aromatase inhibitors. In post-marketing studies, meaning after the clinical trials, where people are followed for longer periods of time, up to a quarter of people on aromatase inhibitors get some hair thinning. It's much less common with tamoxifen, but it does happen, enough that we think we should include it in this video, and we want to validate that you are not imagining it. Recall now we lose about 100 hairs a day. So if you're watching this video and you haven't noticed hair thinning, now you might start to, and you're gonna notice every single hair that you lose. It is normal to lose a lot of hair. If you see though that there's areas on your scalp where your scalp is thin, and usually you'll see that at the hairline, you'll look up here and you'll see hair thinning, where you just don't have the density of hair follicles that you used to have, it's very likely to be due to endocrine therapy. There are a couple of other things that need to be ruled out though, and it's worth making this aside. Thyroid disorders, which are very, very common in the women the exact same age as people diagnosed with breast cancer, can lead to hair thinning. Menopausal shifts can lead to hair thinning, so just with time and changes in our hormones, hair can fall out and then start to grow in again. After a period of stress, people will notice their hair falling out. Think about somebody, maybe you've heard of people who've been pregnant and after delivery, a lot of their hair falls out. That's a major shift in hormones and stress on the body that's no longer there. People who've been on steroids for autoimmune diseases or for other reasons, when they come off the corticosteroids, their hair will fall out in large amounts before growing back in again. There are other vitamin deficiencies and other conditions that can lead to hair thinning. Alcoholism, drug abuse, other stressors on the body, other addictions can also lead to hair thinning. But let's say all of those have been ruled out and we're talking now about hair thinning from endocrine therapy. It usually starts three to six months after starting the medication and it is very likely that it will persist as long as you are on the medication. It happens because of shifts in hormones from aromatase inhibitors, estrogen level falls, and androgens can go up a little bit, testosterone goes up a little bit, that may account for it, or it may just be the fall in estrogen itself. And then tamoxifen actually blocks the estrogen from getting to the hair follicles, and that can put the hair follicles in a resting state as opposed to a growing state. So there are different mechanisms for the two drugs. And that's why we think it works and also why it lasts for as long as you're on the medication. What do you do if you've had the hair thinning? Well, some people just say, this is from the medication. It's going to get better when I go off. Make sure we rule out all those other possible causes of hair thinning and then not do anything. And I would say that's the majority of people who just understand, accept, and they're patient. I'm not saying they're accepting with happiness. Many things we accept are not things we like. We don't have to like something to accept it, right? The other thing you can try are things like biotin. That's an oral supplement. Some people find that they get more acne. 
with biotin. You may have other side effects. So if you try biotin and it's not working, it's good to come off of it. You'll want to try it for three to six months. You can also try minoxidil. This is now available over the counter for men and women and is effective at regrowing hair in many people. The other option would be to see a dermatologist. It's very likely there are new things on the market that are not available over the counter that might be options for you. Estrogen is not considered an option in people on aromatase inhibitors. You don't want to undo the effects of the aromatase inhibitors and estrogen plus tamoxifen is not good. It increases your risk of blood clots and other side effects. So we do not recommend being on both tamoxifen and estrogen at the same time. Topical 5-alpha reductase inhibitors can also be used. We'll have that on the screen here so you can see how it's spelled. Those are things that can be used topically. They have been used systemically for people with uh, an enlarged prostate, but topically is the way we give them for hair loss. And then finally, and this may sound like common sense, but it's worth mentioning that managing your hair with great care is also important. So not yanking on it and not combing it with a lot of tangles. You want to start with your tangles at the very bottom and work up. You not want to use really tight hairstyles because that can lead to loss of hair. Uh, if you put it in a ponytail, don't have it be a tight ponytail, but a softer one. This is more of a maintenance, common sense approach. It won't lead to hair regrowth, but it can help decelerate the rate of hair loss. I hope this has been helpful. If you're wondering about whether tamoxifen and, or aromatase inhibitors might be part of your treatment plan, I'd encourage you to hop over to yerba.com to get your personalized report. There you will learn all about the treatments, why they're used, the pros and cons of each. And it will your report will give you an opportunity to select questions to ask your medical team when you go in and help you be prepared for your visits. I always enjoy talking with you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.